Hello and welcome to the Daily Royal. My name is Shelby and I have been a royal watcher for the past 10 years. In this podcast, I talk about the daily events of seven of the European monarchies. So I talk about Belgium, the UK, Denmark, the Netherlands, Norway, Spain, and Sweden. I upload Monday through Friday with occasional bonus episodes here and there. Today is Thursday, April 8th of 2021. So today was extremely slow, which is fine. I kind of expected it to be slow, and it actually was slow, which for those who came around last week, I expected last week to also be extremely slow, um, and it just never was, which was fine, but it never lived up to expectation. Um, So this week, today specifically, I expected to be extremely slow, And it was, which is great. Um, So that means we'll probably have um, a lot less daily content to go over. Um, And then I will pull up um, some monarchies and we'll try and go to about 35 minutes um, unless I run out of monarchies. And then we'll just have a really short episode. So we are going to start with the British royal family as we have been all week because... Belgium just isn't working this week. And that's fine. Um, My guess is this was their, like, Easter holiday in the country. And so it's pretty normal for them to take this week off, is my assumption. Um, I don't know what happened last year because, I mean, I do, but last year just wasn't a typical year. So no one was really having events by this point. Like, it was, it was just, they weren't happening. So, we are going to jump right in and talk about the British royal family. Today in the UK, it was also really quiet. So the only thing shared on social media was that Queen Elizabeth held a audience over the phone with the new ambassador to Japan from the UK. So this is the third or fourth time that an embassy um, has shared um, that Queen Elizabeth has made contact with the ambassador. I don't know if it's happened more than that. Um, For reference, I've been reading the court circular um, during this podcast for about six months, maybe seven now. I think I started in September and um, it's April, so I guess seven months. And it wasn't mentioned a ton in those seven months, but the Court of St. James, which is the official name for um, at least where ambassadors are posted from and two um, haven't had that many they don't have changes frequently um, so I'm not entirely sure what was going on there so that's what was going on in terms of public facing um, and now we are going to pull up the court circular if there is one I didn't pull it ahead of time because oops um So let's see what we have. Yes, we do. Um, Well, okay. There is a court circular, but it just has the event that we talked about on it. That's it. So that's the day for the British royal family. Uh, Pretty chill. Not a lot going on. Um, So I would suspect maybe an increase in engagements next week. I'm thinking that's when kids return. Um, to school and the UK kind of returns to normal after the holiday is my assumption. Um, so with that, let's go ahead now and move on to the Netherlands.
in the Netherlands today. So I was so excited. There wasn't an event. Um, I, I talk about this all the time. I typically will do my outline um, at around 2 p.m. Eastern time, um, which is like 8 or something in the Netherlands and most of Europe. Um, so the day is usually over. That's why I choose to do it. Sometimes there are some pop-up evening events. There aren't a lot of those right now because of COVID. Um, but like, I think it was like 3.30 or 4 my time, which is like max 10 p.m. over there that this tweet went out. Um, but today Queen Maxima did participate in a digital working visit, um, with representatives from the choir sector of the Netherlands or in the Netherlands. Um, so we talked about this, I think in the episode that went up on Wednesday, um, the first episode of this week where choirs and singing in large groups is not something that's really happening right now because of um, COVID restrictions. And so it, it, it is a sector that um, is struggling right now in terms of like what it can and cannot do. Um, so it was really, it was really interesting because I think this is the first, one of the first, I mean, any art sector has really just completely struggled, um, since the pandemic started, but choir is a really interesting one because like, how does that go on, go continue forward, um, through, vaccination time and like when we're living in this slightly more relaxed state um but yet we still have to be super cautious right like um I know I feel calmer about COVID and I'm only half vaccinated um but like I feel calmer about it and I know a lot of people are feeling um a little bit better but most people I know, and, like, I specifically am still remaining extremely cautious. Um, I don't know. It's it's just interesting. So, like, how does the choir sector continue on um, in this insane environment that we're all living in? Um, so that that's a really interesting thing to think about. Um, so that was the event for the day. And then I talked about yesterday, if there weren't any events, I would talk about the election situation going on in the Netherlands and kind of the king's role and all of that. Um, obviously, there was something going on in the Netherlands, but the, the day today is super chill. So I want to talk about it a little bit, except here's the thing. King Willem Alexander really has no role. Um, his role is to know what's happening. That's it. He's not taking part with, um, they're called informers. So these are the people who are trying to form the government, um, and work with parties because if you're from the States, this is, this is confusing. And, um, it confused me to the first couple of times I've gone through like, or watched an election cycle happen in one of these seven countries. Um, but they, these countries run on, um, more than a two party system. So here in the States, we have two primary, like two major political parties. We have the Democrats and we have the Republicans. So almost always there's a winner and a loser. Um, and the winner gets, you know, over half and the loser gets under half. Well, in other countries, there are many, many, many political parties, you know, um, in Belgium, there are a ton in the Netherlands, there are a ton in Spain, there are a ton. The UK is kind of a two party system. Um, they have the, the conservatives, the Tories, and then the labor party, which are the more liberals. Um, but for the most part, most European countries have more than one more than two parties. So there's always a um, 
more more times than not, there's a coalition that has to be formed to get to a majority run government. Um, so in the Netherlands, 74 is the majority. Um, you have to win 74 seats in the election to be considered uh, winning properly, um, which with over 50%. However, um, the conservative prime minister of the Netherlands, Mark Rutt, is on his is is on his third term. Um, there was a little bit of a scandal, so the government um, kind of collapsed and <laughs> resigned. With elections held in uh, around March seventeenth, it was like a three day election cycle um, because of COVID. So Mark Rutt and his party won the most seats, but they won like 34 or 33 seats or something. So they have to form a coalition with at least 40, um, 41 other members of the government to create their majority and their government. So we have seen this play out. Um, but King Willem Alexander has no role. So really his role is going to be once they're chosen, swearing in the new ministers, the prime minister, etc. Um, as of a few days ago, it was looking like Mark Rutt would be the prime minister and maybe still will be. Um, but he's in a little bit of some hot water about something else. And so it's just unclear what's going to happen. So really King Willem Alexander has no role. Um which makes this conversation like not really necessary until it's time for him to uh, preside over the swearing in um, and all of that. So that's where we're at. Um, I talked about this yesterday, but I'm super interested in the process because I really like um, foreign relations and like learning how other countries' governments work. Um, but I probably won't share much more um, on this podcast on this podcast because there's just there's no role for the king. So when it's time to swear in, we might talk about it a little bit more. But as of right now, that looks like it's still um, a good bit off because of Mark Rutt's situation. So that's what was going on in the Netherlands. Um, we're skipping Norway. There were a couple of events, but like nothing that I can expand upon. So um, we'll just go over them quickly and then jump to Spain. So today, uh, Crown Prince Akun held a week, uh, his meeting. Okay, so Akun is still serving as regent. So he held a meeting with the Minister of Foreign Affairs today. Um, and then Crown Prince Akun and Crown Princess Metamarit took part in the board meeting for the Crown Prince Couples Foundation. That's it. That's their big return for the day. Um, tomorrow, Akun will lead the Council of State. And I think on Monday, King Harald comes back. We'll see. He's not on the calendar yet. I have concerns. Um, so that's Norway. So now let's go ahead and jump into um, what the event was in Spain today. In Spain today, there was one event, um, and it was King Felipe because Queen Letizia worked her one day this week and is done, apparently. Um, every time I say that, I feel kind of bad because it seems like I'm judging. And I'm not going to lie, I'm judging a little. Um, look, Spain's in the middle of a pandemic. They're pretending isn't happening. Um, it's hard to do this and so like Letizia can't go with Felipe on things like I get that for um COVID reasons I mean sometimes she will but not for things like he did today um 
but yeah, I don't know. Like, also the things that, like, the causes she supports and the things that she's doing, like, aren't super active right now. I, I don't know. It's like, I know why she's not working, but, like, step it up. Um, and also, I'm not sure, like, maybe the girls are out of school, and so, like, it's a lighter week. I don't know. Um, but, like, once, once in a week, really, I'm not thrilled. Um, but as I've talked about, these people are not my royals. I don't live in a country with a monarchy. Um, so while I judge them and I think things... Like, my opinion doesn't matter. Um, not really. Not in the grand scheme of, like, their existence. Um, so, I have my opinions, but I'm not a Spaniard. I, like, it doesn't matter what I think, really. So, but yeah. So, she's worked her one event this week. And so, King Felipe is holding down the fort. Um... So today he was present for the award ceremony for the Spanish Confederation of Small and Medium Enterprises, um, which deliver awards to self-employed entrepreneurs, uh, small businesses, as well as medium businesses, which make up like 70% of, um, 60% of Spain's, uh, GDP, which is a lot. Um, and then the rest of it basically comes from tourism, um, with a very small portion going to their larger companies. Um, so it's a big deal. And like in Felipe's speech today, he talked about how, when we talk about like small and medium businesses, you're talking about society. Um, most people aren't part of a corporation. I mean... In Spain. Like, they're employed by smaller and medium-sized firms and companies and things like that. So, when you're talking about small and medium businesses in Spain, like, you're talking about the majority. Um, and so, it's a big deal. And so, this award ceremony honors different um, small businesses and medium businesses um, for different things. So, like, they honor um, self-employed entrepreneurs, um, for the work that they've done as well as, um, focused on like sustainability, et cetera. Like there's a, a lot of, um, there are several different categories in this event. Um, so it was pretty, um, I hate calling it standard, but like talked about this a little bit yesterday or I alluded to it and I don't think I finished my thought out very well so some of these countries a lot of the countries that I talk about are really focusing their day-to-day -day efforts on COVID and like what's going on with this and what's going on with this you know like yesterday Queen Maxima of the Netherlands was at a school in an industry learning about like rapid PCR or rapid COVID tests um King Philippe and Queen Matilde are really, when they leave, they're focused on, um, when they leave the palace, they're focused on things like medicine, um, recovery. You know, King Philippe this year, I think, has had, like, one thing that isn't COVID-related in terms of out outdoor appearances, and it was Olympics-related, which is also part of COVID, um, because the Olympics wouldn't be happening this year if it weren't for COVID. So... That, that seems to be a lot of what's happening. You know, the Swedish royal family hasn't left the palace, like, at all this year. Um, and Denmark is, is doing things that aren't super related to COVID, but they're doing so few. So Spain is doing a ton of events, and next to none of them are focused on COVID. And so this is par for normal, like, this is completely normal, um, Spanish royal family events. Uh, King Felipe do does this every year. I remember talking about it last year. I think it was held in, like, October or something, um, for 2020. Like, 
this is normal. Um, so I, I, I don't know. There's like a weird line, right? Like I, I don't quite know <laughs> how to talk about certain things because they're different than what everyone else is doing, but also like repetitive. Um, so anyway, that's that. That's what was going on in Spain. So now we are going to make a small jump over to the Swedish royal family. Today, there was one event in Sweden. Now, it was a pre-recorded event and their calend- it was added to their calendar yesterday. Um, so it must have just maybe snuck up on them or something. But today, Queen Sylvia participated in the symposium titled Faith and Flourishing Strategies for Preventing and Healing Child's Sexual Abuse. Um, so this was a video greeting. I don't think she participated in like the day-to-day, the, um, conversation pieces of the symposium, but she gave a brief opening speech talking about the importance of, um, I'm trying to be extremely delicate, the importance of protecting children. Um, that didn't need to be delicate, but, like, the things that can happen two children are horrible and in an age where children are spending even more time online um it's even worse so and this is something that Queen Sylvia has really focused on all throughout um so she started the World Childhood Foundation that really focuses on improving children's lives, and this is part of that. Um, and then through the past probably decade, she's really focused on, like, internet safety for children um, and how to protect them from predators and also just, like, childhood behavior. Um to make sure that they are staying safe online even when teenagers are being stupid because all teenagers are stupid. I was a stupid teenager. My stupidity was different than some others, but like I was a stupid teenager. I was friends with stupid teenagers. Teenagers are stupid and do stupid things thinking they're cool. Um, And so this is just an extra layer of like educating them on like, Here's how we're safe about the things that we're doing. Um, Here's how to prevent predators from finding you because you're not being smart. Um, And so that is part of this ongoing conversation about children and sexual abuse and internet safety and all of it. Um, Yeah. So that's what was going on in Sweden. We are now going to take another break and I will be right back where we will uh, talk about some more of the royal families that I don't talk about um, until we get to 35 minutes. So hang tight and I will be right back. So today we are going over, um, we're just going to go over the however many we can for the next 10 minutes. I'm guessing we'll probably get to um, through almost all of them. Um, so we are starting with, um, Oman, I think. I'm like 90% certain. If you've already heard Oman, we can just skip it. Um, but I'm pretty sure that's where we started. I forgot to highlight. Um, but I think the last country we talked about was Morocco, um, last weekend. So, Oman is one of the southernmost countries in the Arabian Peninsula, so it's near Saudi Arabia. Um, 
it is an absolute monarchy, meaning that the sultan, which is the title of the monarch in Oman, um, has absolute authority. He makes the decisions. I think he serves in like a dual role as sultan and prime minister. Um, the current sultan is Sultan Sultan Haytham. Um, so he began his reign in early January of 2020 um, after the death of his first cousin. So if you want to go back, this will be fun, um, and listen to some of the very first episodes of this podcast. Um, Sultan, the previous Sultan in Oman, um, died on January 11th, and a couple of royals that I talk about visited Oman to pay their respects. Um, and so this is before I really knew what I was doing, um, but I tried to talk about it. And so it's very funny. Um, I can look back at it now and laugh because of how much um, this podcast has changed in the past year, year and a half almost. Um, Like I feel much more confident in talking about things. Um, I feel much more educated, things like that. But uh, definitely interesting if you want to go back and listen to that and feel secondhand secondhand embarrassment for me. That would be great. Um, so yeah, that's what's going on. That's what's, that's Oman. Uh, next we're moving to Qatar, which is an extremely small country in the Middle East on the Arabian Peninsula, like extremely small. Um, so the country is a unitary semi-constitutional monarchy, meaning that the emir of Qatar, whose name is Tamim bin Ahmad, um, has a substantial amount of power, but there is technically still a government. Um, so he is involved in the day-to-day politic, but is not the equivalent of a prime minister. I don't think that's the title they use, but like not the equivalent of the head of the government. Um, although it seems like maybe in Qatar it's like a front and really he's making all the decisions, but I'm, I'm not going to confirm that. Um, it just seems like that from the little research I did. So, um, the Amir Temim bin Ahmad, um, I like to point this out because it's culturally different, um, has three wives and 13 children and is also an alleged supportive supporter of Islamist terrorists. So that's awesome. It's not. It's terrible. Um, And is involved with Saudi Arabia in the proxy wars in Syria and Libya. So all in all, not a great country. Uh, Or not a great, I I don't know. It's, It's not my country. It's not my area of expertise. Seriously, please don't ever try and quiz me on Middle East politics. I don't get them. I don't understand them. They confuse me and they stress me out. So, um, with that, we are going to segue into Saudi Arabia, which is one that I would like to just skip. I'm not going to lie. Um, Saudi Arabia and their royal family and monarchy is (sighs) troubled and troublesome. Um, so, even wrote in my outline. Can I just skip this one? Um, so Saudi Arabia is the largest country in, on the Arabian Peninsula. Um, it is a Islamic absolute monarchy. So, um, it's a theocracy, meaning that the government is mandated by Islamic religion, um, as well as an absolute monarchy, which means that the king of Saudi Arabia has universal power. Um, However, he doesn't use it. Um, So there's not going to be a whole lot of talk about the king um, because his son, the crown prince, um, Mohammed bin Salman, is de facto ruler. He he runs the day-to-day. He is doing the things. Um, (laughs) however, his father, King Salman, is technically still the monarch. Um, look, if you're familiar with the world, 
you'll know that Mohammed bin Salman and some of the atrocities that he's responsible for and the proxies that he's dealing with in the wars in Syria and Libya, it, it's bad. It's just bad. Um, Mohammed bin Salman is one of the worst people on this planet at the moment. Um, I don't know, it was really interesting trying to read through his Wikipedia article because, of course, my mind is definitely um, skewed with an American perspective and at that, a liberal American perspective. So, but, like, look, he's responsible for the murder of an Ameri- uh, for a journalist who lived in the States. Um, and it's awful. And... I, I just have nothing nice to say. That's why I'm like, can I just skip this one, please? So that's Saudi Arabia. Um, and now we are going to move on to Thailand, which is a country in Southeast Asia um, that is a constitutional monarchy, technically. Um, the king of Thailand is seen as a figurehead and uniting force, um, or used to be. However, lately the climate in Thailand around the monarchy is is not good. Um, the current king of Thailand, King Rama X, is... Uh, uh, an entitled party boy with no real um, respect for his country or countrymen and women in what their day-to-day life is. So, for example, in 2020, he's basically been in uh, Germany the entire pandemic. Um, Part of that is because his people are um, in the streets protesting the royal family's existence and a lot of the laws in Thailand, which it's illegal to talk about, um negatively about the king in Thailand. I'm an American citizen. I can do things like this, um, but it's super illegal there. Like, I would be thrown in jail and probably executed. So I can never go to Thailand now, Um, which is fine. It's just, it's bad. Um, He has come back a few times and it's just not been great. Um, basically, King Rama the the tenth is just a little crazy, um, and in crazy I mean he's just not a good dude who does a lot of weird things, including wearing crop tops, which cracks me up. Um, so that is Thailand, and now we are gonna finish today's episode with Tonga, which is a country in Polynesia. It's a Polynesian country, um, so think like Australia, New Zealand, uh, Fiji places like that. That's Polynesia, um, which is a constitutional monarchy. And in 2008, the then king relinquished any of his power and announced that he would follow government recommendation. Um, I'm not sure if the new king who was um, put in power in 2012 has the same feeling. I'm confident that he probably does. Um, also you'll notice this is the only, and I feel awful about this, this is the only king that I'm not naming. And in, uh, the UAE, which is, you'll hear tomorrow, um, because I can't figure out how to pronounce his name. And I've tried desperately, um, but I just, please Google it because I fail. Um, so that is Tonga. Um, okay, so that is the end of today's episode. Um, I am going to go back to my regular recording schedule, which means you will not hear from me again until Monday. Um, we do have a couple birthdays in the next couple, uh, birthdays and anniversaries in the next couple days. So I'll be active on the dailyroyal.com and the daily royal on Instagram. Please go check those out. Um, but for now, I will talk to you all on Monday. Have a great rest of your weekend. Bye.